Hello and welcome back to another Code Pro tutorial. So today's tutorial is for beginners. Um, if you are new to iOS development and you want to learn how to make networking requests, there is an easy way to do that using a framework called Alamo Fire. And Alamo Fire is basically a Swift networking library that makes it really simple to send web service requests without having to know all the intricacies of URL session and making requests yourself. So if you're a beginner, this is a great way to get started. Obviously, you want to branch out and learn how to do it manually in the future, but this is good to get your feet wet. And if you're a new iOS developer, make sure you check out my iOS beginners course available on both Skillshare on Udemy. Sign up with my link on Udemy and get the course for 50% off. Or if you use Skillshare, you'll get two months of Skillshare premium for free. So let's go ahead and open up Xcode and get started. All right, so for this one, we're going to dive into Alamo Fire. And Alamo Fire is a Swift networking framework. Uh, you can kind of think of it as the Swift successor to AF networking. And uh, it's pretty simple to use. If you go to github.com forward slash Alamo Fire, uh, you can read up on the project, how to install it, the documentation, and all of the features that it supports. So um, normally, we would use something like URL session to make our networking calls um, in iOS. Now, there's nothing wrong with URL session. It's great, but sometimes if you want something that's a little bit easier to use, more out of the box, you don't have to know so much about networking, uh, then Alamo Fire can kind of bridge that gap until you become more familiar with how to do all of this stuff manually through a URL session. And so uh, it's really kind of good to start with, and it, it, there's a lot of there, there are a lot of benefits for using it, but um, eventually you'll want to migrate off and understand how to do it yourself. So if we go down here, um, we can read the installation section, and there's two ways to install it. You can install it through CocoaPods, or you can install it through Carthage. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to use Carthage just because I prefer using Carthage. Um, but you can install it through CocoaPods. It's, it's very simple if you know how to do it. And so for everybody doing it through Carthage, um, what we'll do here is um, you'll probably need to set up your environment. So you'll need to run brew update, brew install Carthage. And then once you have Carthage set up, um, you can go ahead and copy this. And we need to create a cart file um, to paste this in. So let me go ahead and create my cart file now. So once you're inside your cart file, um, just go ahead and paste in the GitHub Alamo fire. And then we'll get out of this by uh, quitting out. And then the next command we'll run is a Carthage uh, update platform iOS verbose. And what that'll do is check out Alamo Fire. It will compile it and build it from source um, and make sure that it's uh, in a binary format that we can just drag and drop into our project. So uh, let's give that a second to run. And then once that's done, we can come back and proceed through the rest of the tutorial. All right, so once uh, Carthage is done building your project, um, if you go into the root folder of your project, there's going to be a Carthage directory. And what you'll want to do is go into this directory, go into the build folder, iOS, and you'll see there's the framework. So um, at this point, we're going to drag the framework uh, into our project. So if we go back to the project and um, we go to the general, scroll down to linked frameworks and binaries, we can just drag in Alamo Fire, and we are pretty much good to go. Now, there's one other thing we need to add, and that is going to be over in the build phases tab here. And uh, we'll go ahead and create a new run script and I'll show you how to fill this in. So for the run script, um, if you can double click it here, and what we'll do is rename this to Carthage Copy Frameworks and expand it. And then inside of the script, we're going to type slash user slash local slash bin slash Carthage Copy Frameworks. And then we're going to go under the input files here. And where it says uh, source root, we're going to do Carthage build iOS Alamo fire dot framework. All this does is it takes that framework in our Carthage folder and then moves it to where the simulator is when it runs our app. So we're all set here. Let's go over into our actual code. And uh, what I'm going to do here is create a new class. So we'll do a new Swift class. And we'll just call this 
networking client. Now our networking client is going to import Alamo Fire and we're going to create a class networking client like so and um, we're going to give it one method and that method is going to just be a simple func execute URL which is a type URL and what we'll do next is we need to say okay um, well, what are we going to request? What are we going to execute? What what web service are we going to talk to? And so if you go to uh, JSON placeholder uh, dot, I think that's typicode.com or typicode, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, it, this is kind of cool. So it's a fake online REST API for testing and prototyping. So you can do, um, they have a, a different requests that you can basically call and get JSON back. And we can actually use these um, in our web service calls just to test with and see how things work. So you can see here, um, this returns back just in an array of JSON. Um, there's a single post here, for example, that just returns back a dictionary outside of an array. So these seem like really great ways to practice what we're just trying to implement. And so I'm gonna take this URL as it is and just copy it and we'll, we'll use this in our project. So um, let's go back into Xcode here and what I'm going to do is go into the view controller and just paste that into the view controller. I'm going to comment it out because we're going to use that in a minute. And let's go back into the networking client and finish implementing this. And so let's work on the Alamo Fire part, the actual uh, part that makes the request. So uh, basically, inside of our method here, we're going to call Alamo Fire dot request. And you'll see here there's a few different kinds. There's a URL, a URL request, and then a URL with a few different other options that we can use there. We're gonna use the URL here just because it's simple and that's what we're passing in. So we'll provide the URL as the parameter. And I, there are ways to basically chain uh, different kinds of um, tasks. So after you make the request, you can chain a validate uh, command basically that's going to see if the response codes are within the acceptable 200 range. Otherwise, you'll get an error message um, in your uh, error validation that comes back. So we can call a dot validate, and then we can call a response JSON. And now there's a few different kinds of responses here. So you have response JSON, where you'll get the results back all ready for you in a JSON-friendly manner. You have a regular completion handler. You can get back data if you want just data. Uh, there's you can get back a string response string. There's all these different kinds of response um, returns that you can use here. So just something to keep in mind. But I will use JSON just for the sake of simplicity. And uh, what we can do inside of this guy here is just call this response inside the closure name, and we can start uh, checking what we get back. So uh, we got to take a look at the response itself, and you can see here that it's a type data response any. And let me see if I can jump to the definition there. We can take a look at what that is. I might not be able to, let me see if I can get into here. Hold on. If I command click, I can usually get into the documentation. Okay, there we go. So data response, it's an Alamo fire construct. And let's command click on it and read up. So it's a struct, uh, it's a struct that stores all the data associated with a serialized response of a data or upload request. So it obviously gives us back some information. There's the request, response, some data, the result, and uh, a few other things in here. So alamofire.result, and that is an enum, which provides back a success value, a failure, and some properties to determine if it was a success or failure. So that's just useful to know um, when you're working with this. And so what we'll end up doing inside of here back in our code is checking for the error first, right? So if the request failed, we need to know um, so we can react. So if let error equals response dot error, we'll do something. Else if let JSON array equals response dot result dot value as 
an array of dictionaries, do something else, finally else if let json dict dictionary equals response dot result dot value as a single dictionary we will do something else. So we have three different paths of execution here and uh, what we're going to do is make one modification. What we're going to do is pass in an additional parameter here, our own completion handler that will supply. And what we'll do is we'll type alias this just so it's a little bit easier to work with. And actually I'll show, I'll show you the non-type alias first just so you can see why this kind of makes it a little bit cleaner. So what we can do here is create another parameter and we'll call it completion. And it's going to look like this starting off. We're going to create a closure like that, a basic one. And what we'll do here is fill in the parameters for the closure. Need one more bracket there. And the first parameter is going to be string any for the array of dictionaries. And the second parameter is going to be an error if something goes wrong. We'll make both of these optional. And what we'll end up doing here is you see how messy this is? Like it's it, as a parameter in here, it's kind of kind of gross, right? And so what we can do is rather than having to do that, we can basically cut that out, go up here and create a type alias to it. And we can call that type alias web service response. And we can set that equal to the closure that we had originally in here. And then we can say that this completion is going to be the type web service response. Now you see how much cleaner our function signature looks if we type alias it. So um, now inside of here, I want to do one other thing. Um, I, I want to make this, I'm going to make this non-optional. We'll, we'll make that required. Um, and so inside of our cases, we'll have to call our completion handler. And for the error case, we'll pass back the error message that we got. And we'll provide nil uh, for, or I'm sorry, uh, nil for the JSON, and we'll pass back the error through. I have to make that escaping. Okay. For the second option in here, we'll call the completion handler again, and we'll pass in the JSON array and nil for the error. And for the final completion handler, we will call JSON dict and nil for the error, just like that. And so that's it. You can see it's pretty simple and really under less than 10 lines of code, we're able to build out our request. Now the reason I'm putting this inside of an array is because it's a single dictionary, but I'm defining my, uh, my signature as it's going to send back an array of dictionaries. Now even if I get a single dictionary back, that's okay. I can pass it back this way and it's really not a big deal for, at least for this uh, demonstration. Now, um, so, one thing we need to look at here is I mentioned it before, but it's important to understand it is this is just sending a URL, but what if you wanted to create a post request, right? So you have the option to create a URL request like this. And from the URL request, you can change things like the HTTP method you could change that to maybe a post if you wanted to, or a put, or whatever you're trying to do. Um, you have the ability to change the headers, add value for HTTP header field. So you and, and basically um, you can execute this through the same way. So you have Alamo fire request, and then you can pass in a URL request like that. So if you need more flexibility to customize your request, you have this route that you can go down as an alternative. So just something to keep in mind. Alamo Fire might have some additional uh, APIs you can use for that too, but um, just uh, an FYI. So we're all set here. Um, let's go back to our main storyboard here. And what we want to do is create some entry points in our user interface to fire the call. So I'm going to make it really simple. I'm going to create one button and one text view. And I'm just going to drag that onto my storyboard here. Just position it flush on the bottom. 
and to the right and left sides. Rename my button execute, like that. I'm just going to go ahead and give these the suggested constraints from Xcode because I don't really care. I just want to something that I can do quickly. Get rid of the default text. And we'll go into the assistant editor here. That's that little button with the two circles. And we can split our uh, UI and our code file. And so back in our view controller, what we'll just do is create some outlets, interface builder outlets to these elements. So starting with the text view, you hold, hold down the control key, click and drag, and make one called text view. And it will create an action for the button. So select the button, hold down the control key, click and drag. And we'll just call this execute request. And so we're all set to go. Now, um, let me go back into the regular view here and go back into the view controller. And so in our top here, I'm going to create a private instance to our networking client. So networking client. Like that. And now we're ready to actually run this thing. So we'll let do a guard let URL to execute equals URL for a string. Else turn because that's an optional so we want to make sure that we uh, we check that to make sure it's not nil and for, I'm going to paste in the URL I copied from before so that uh, HTTPS JSON placeholder URL for the posts that's gonna be the first one we try now finally the last bit we need to do here is the networking client dot execute URL to execute and we'll implement the completion handler. So we'll just put um, JSON and error. And the final bit of code we'll need to check here is really what we want to uh, display. So if we get back an error message, we can do self.textView.text equals error.localized description, uh, else if let JSON response, or I'm sorry, JSON equals JSON self dot text view dot text equals JSON dot description. And, and description is easy because it's just a textual representation of the dictionary. So it's kind of binds it like a string. We're all set to go here. So let's go ahead and run this in the simulator and see how this looks. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a shot to execute. And boom, there we go. So we're all getting back that uh, response. It's quite large, lots of JSON in there, but um, looks like it's working. We can modify this and do that. I think the posts dash or forward slash one for the single uh, dictionary and just verify that uh, that is working as expected. So let's try that. And execute. And so there's the single dictionary that we sent back um, and so that's working too so it's really that simple uh, to use Alamo fire you saw it was only uh, literally less than 10 lines of code and there's a lot to it so it's definitely worth taking a look into um, if networking is not your forte or you don't care about it you just want to build an app it's definitely a great starting point um, to get a lot of the things done that would require um, maybe some more knowledge uh, that you might not have. And that wraps up this tutorial. See, it really wasn't that bad. It's pretty simple using Alamo Fire, but you'll learn how to do all the advanced stuff later on. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to CodePro to stay updated for all the latest tutorials. Make sure you follow CodePro on social media. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Patreon. And let me know in the comments section down below what you would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will catch you in the next one.